Please introduce yourself and tell me about your campaign. I'm Jennifer Lal. I'm the president of the Center for Bioethics and Culture. We're based in the San Francisco Bay Area. And I'm one of the original founding members, signers, if you will, of the international campaign called Stop Surrogacy Now. How did Stop Surrogacy Now come about? Well, for me, it came about probably more out of my frustration in the United States where this is woefully unregulated and just seeing the carnage, if you will, of women and children that have been exploited, harmed, hurt, used, um, you know, whatever adjective you want to attach to it, and really the lack of an organization or a big network in the United States. I saw the Europeans much more energized and mobilized and network, so I wanted to sort of glom onto that. Because um, we don't have, you know, large feminist groups in the United States. We have individuals. Um, so this is sort of one way of capturing individuals in the United States, giving us sort of an umbrella, and also just showing the world that this isn't just one or two people, it's many women, men, people from all around the world. So this is very much a feminist human rights based organization, Stop Surrogacy Now. Yes, and I'd, I'd also add children's rights. Yeah. So women, children's, feminist, human rights. Because of course, um, often those who are pro-surrogacy will accuse those of us who actively campaign against it that we are religious nutcases or that we are um, homophobic and we're trying to stop gay couples, for example, from accessing their rights to be parents. What would you say about that? Um, well, for one, I've been working on this issue for over a decade, and heterosexuals have driven a large amount of use and abuse of this industry uh, to have babies. And while I'm very sympathetic to people who want to have children that for all kinds of reasons can't, this is not the way to do it. Um, so it's not a we're singling out gay men. Um, I know we're accused of doing that, but it's not, it's not a gay men issue. Um, I oppose all of surrogacy, no matter who does it. Married, single, gay, lesbian, unicorns with wings. <laughs> Sorry. Especially unicorns with <laughs> <Yes>. wings. <laughs> who are the surrogate mothers? But who could be state? against unicorns with wings that want babies? N not me. <laughs> Imagine how cute they would be. <laughs> But tell me about the surrogate mothers, because of course we have the poster girl uh, surrogate mother who is the white, blonde, smiling, altruistic surrogate. And then of course we have the horror stories of the desperately poor women from a very low caste in India. Tell me about the surrogates in the States. Where are they from? Which communities do they come from? Well, they don't come from the wealthy, affluent communities. Um, we don't have destitute poverty in the United States like we do in India, but they are low-income women. Uh, they are often young moms. In the United States, it's a lot of military wives. You can see the targeting and the advertisement directed to this kind of demographic. Unlike the egg donor, it's not a university student, it's often a low-income stay-at-home mom that's proven that she can carry a pregnancy to term. Um, low-income women, I think, are more desirable because they're going to not have the risk, if you will, of changing their mind and wanting to keep the baby so they're more um, stable in the, in the industry's eyes. So they're just low income, sometimes a stay at home moms with a few little children that see this as a way to make money and help somebody. So finally, tell me about the um, human rights abuses towards the children who are born through surrogacy. Because people would say, well, of course, their parents really wanted them, they paid a lot of money to have this child or these children, these children are cared for, brought up, we haven't heard about abuse by the commissioning parents of surrogate children. But tell me why you think that this is a children's rights issue as well. Well, my background was for many years in pediatric nursing, so I'm a big proponent of maternal child health. You know, we always say maternal child because the mom and the babies go together and there's that wonderful bonding and good things that happen um, in utero uh, that we encourage in hospitals all the time and we want that to happen and that's a good and important thing. And then in this regard, we just treat children as products. You know, you take it out of a womb. Here's a woman's body that's been preparing for nine months to nurse a baby and you just rip this baby out of the womb and you plop it in the hands of strangers. I've read the contracts in surrogates in the United States um, sign 
I mean, it's, and it's just disgusting, and you think, on one hand, you think these are people that are going to be raising children, and they will say such you know, despicable things about you know, what you can do with your health and what you can not do with your health and what you can eat. I read a contract recently that said if the surrogate, for whatever reason, suffered a massive trauma and had to be put on life support, that the commissioning couple got to decide if and when she was removed from life support. And you think, these, my God, these are the people that are going to be raising, buying a child? Um, so I, I just think, you know, when you see children treated that way, as if it doesn't matter, and all that is necessary is that they were wanted and loved, um, and it doesn't matter how they came about, that's hugely problematic. Thank you. You're welcome.